I'm Eric, and you're watching Fletched Evolution. I'm out in the woods today with the Stinger platform, doing some velocity testing with the three limb weights, 35, 55, and 90 pounds, evaluating how the trigger feels in lieu of weighing it with the trigger scale, seeing how the bolts hold up under the different weights, and I'm also going to do some impromptu penetration testing with some aluminum sheeting and some foam. So let's just get right to it, and then we'll see what we find out. As I'm sure you guys know, consistency is key in everything, and especially in shooting. Your shot process needs to be the same for every single shot, and you need to be working with consistent components. So I want to find out how consistent the bolts are that Steambow sells. The practice bolts, the bodkin bolts, and the broadheads. So I'm going to weigh 10 of each on this grain scale here, and write the numbers down, since I'm not sure if you guys can see the display on the scale. Then I'll run a spreadsheet, and I'll tell you guys what we find out. These are the average bolt weights and standard deviations. All the weights were more consistent than I expected, though the practice bolts are heavier than Steambow claims, while the bodkins and broadheads are lighter. I expect that these slight bolt weight deviations have absolutely no discernible effect on accuracy, all things considered. You can find all the numbers in the spreadsheet in the description. There are two other considerations when you're selecting whatever limb weight that you want to use the draw weight. One is the trigger pull. If you look at how this latch works, the string just rests in this notch and then you pull the trigger back and it's a simple lever. As you pull it back, it edges also up. So to some extent, it maybe even pushes the string into the front of the latch. I think the string mostly slides up and you keep wax on it so it's slippery. And if I flip over and catch the light, you can see that this, this latch is rounded a little bit to reduce the sharp corners for the string and for the serving. But there it seems like it's mostly a 90 degree angle. I think you could theoretically, if you wanted to reduce the trigger weight, you could make this slightly more slanted, the front of the latch there, the front of that notch. But when you cock the, you know, the tactical or the compact, the only thing that's preventing the string from firing is the fact that it's like hooked into the front of this latch here. So I wouldn't be too aggressive on changing this angle just in the interest of safety. This is going to be the velocity testing. I am standing six feet from the chronograph and I'm going to do five shot groups, five shots reload. There won't be any commentary through this. I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to speed it up so you guys don't have to spend too much time watching all this, but I'll also summarize the results in, a, in an Excel table and I'll put the numbers up on the screen too in the YouTube video.
These are the average velocities and standard deviations from my full measurements. I only showed five shot strings in the video since watching everything would be very tedious. The chronograph was finicky at times, but I also included what I believe to be invalid measurements in my list of 20 shots per bolt type and limb weight that you can see in the spreadsheet in the description. The average velocities are all a touch shy of what is claimed by Steambow, but I have no idea at what distance these velocities were measured. If you look at the full spreadsheet and eliminate the implausible values, you get a much lower standard deviation. And no matter the bolt, you are getting basically 130 feet per second at 35 pounds, 160 feet per second at 55 pounds, and 200 feet a second at 90 pounds. Aside from the implausible readings, the velocities were very consistent. It is worth noting that bolts with a slight bend in them, including from carrying them around in your pocket for half a day, are considerably slower due to the increased friction when firing the bow. I want to test the practical accuracy of the Stinger. This is the tactical version, 55 pound limbs. I'm standing 10 meters from that bore. I'm going to aim behind the shoulder, about where the top of the heart should be. I'm gonna test the accuracy of the survival in a you know a mock practical situation. I'm running the 90 pound limbs because in my mind, even though the trigger weight is a lot heavier, and maybe it's too much for some people to shoot accurately, if I actually had this like say in my truck in case I broke down somewhere and had to survive, you know, in the winter time so I got back or something like that, I think I'd want the 90 pound limbs because I just get a little bit more distance and penetration. And maybe I can live with the heavier trigger pull. Get loaded up here. Safety off. And right, I'm gonna aim behind the shoulder. One. Two. Three. Well, I kind of pulled that one, but I knew it. Let's do a fourth. That's not the trigger rate. That was me losing patience. That's four. Let's take the camera down off the tripod. Those are good shots. I pulled that one, the one that's more towards the ear but I felt it and it wasn't the trigger weight, it was just me getting impatient. So 10 meters practice bolts, get on with that, just as long as the bow's got enough penetration. This is gonna be a, I don't know, sort of a redneck penetration test. This is the Steambow foam target that they sell for the uh, Stinger things. It's not strong enough for the Fenris, by the way, but we'll put an arrow through it. And this is just some roofing tin. I gotta measure the thickness back in the workshop. I know it's probably a half a millimeter, something like that, but this is just to provide a little bit of a hard surface so we can see the difference in like the wound channel, I guess, or like the opening, and to slow these things down a little bit maybe, because I'm gonna shoot from like, I'm just gonna go point blank, like two feet. So this is like best case. Practice bolt, 35 pounds. Vodkin, 35 pounds. And broadhead, 35 pounds. Now we'll shift to 55. Practice bolt. That's got more punch. Bodkin. Yeah, I'm liking that. Broadhead, say 55 pounds. Now this is gonna be a touch slower using the survival 90 pound baby.
practice bolt blue, 90 pounds. Sweet. So 90 pounds, safety off, bodkin. Well, that bodkin, well, I'll have to glue those veins back down. Ninety pounds broadhead. Dang. And then seven point five inch adder bolt arrow, depending on how you roll with terminology. Just wanted this is heavier. Let's see what we get for penetration. So we take a look now. We see a nice stepped result basically. Thirty five pounds. 55 pounds in the middle, and then the 90 pounds. See with the 90 pounds, the practice point, the field point didn't go in very far. Well, I mean, it went in far, but not nearly as far as the bodkin or the broadhead, that just sliced right through. And then that's the adder arrow. Let's flip this around and just look from the side. You can also see more of a comparison there in terms of penetration depth. And see so a nice round hole here. And then I think because of the shape of the bodkin tip with those scallops, you get a little bit more of a flower kind of a thing. Broadhead makes a wider hole. And it seems to me that this adder bolt's making the biggest hole. I mean, it makes sense. The tip is obviously bigger. The shaft is bigger. Had the least penetration though at 90 pounds. And I can't shoot this out of a, out of a magazine fed stinger because it's too long. And it's also too high. I, I had to modify the sight rail and the survival to get these adder bolts to work. And I'm not sure what Steamboat would say about that, but I don't care. They gave it to me to test out, so I'll see what I can do with it. These are the numbers for the penetration depths and the wound widths and heights that I measured in my aluminum and foam medium. You can pause the video if you want to take a closer look or take a look at all the numbers in the spreadsheet. Obviously, the 90 pounds give the greatest penetration to the veins in part, but it does come at a price in trigger weight and bolt life. So we saw the penetration with the 35, 55, 90 pound stingers with short arrows, light arrows, different kinds of tips. Now I'm gonna take the Fenris. So this is a 20 inch carbon arrow and a 50 pound draw and like a 25 inch draw length. So a 25 inch power stroke maybe is what that equates to. And I'm gonna shoot the same target, just one of the pieces of aluminum that I had just to see, well, I know it's gonna go much farther through, but just to see what the difference is in power if you take a full size bow None of the stinger arrows pass through. And this went through pretty far. Point blank, same distance as we used for the stinger. So even the 90 pound bow with that short power stroke is no comparison to an actual, you know, to a real full size compound bow. And I'm only pulling 50 pounds. And the other thing to consider when you're selecting a draw weight is how long your bolts are gonna hold up. I've been shooting a lot of tests and I've been shooting some hard objects too to see what happens. This bolt, I hope you can see. Yeah, I think you can see. Uh, this blade is bent. I shot this into a spruce stump that we cut down a couple years ago. So it's softwood, but it's, it's dried out and hard for softwood. Uh, the blade is also loose. It's wobbling. This happens sometimes even if the blade's not bent. But this is usually just the screw here, just the one screw. So if I tighten the screw down, then the wobble stops. And I don't know, I could tap this blade straight again, but it's never going to be the same again. I'm losing knocks to an extent with the 90 pounds. They're kind of popping out. Um, I'm especially losing broadhead tips in foam targets, which surprises me. I expect if I'm hitting wood, tree stumps, or even like this aluminum stuff that I shot, I can imagine then the tips being damaged, but that I'm shooting into like the steamboat foam target and pulling out the broadhead with the 90 pound, after shooting with the 90 pound limbs and I leave the tip in the target, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, and some bolts are getting bent. I think these are getting struck by other bolts. This, this happened during my velocity testing where I was shooting at like six feet. And, you know, so the bolts are hitting close together even though I'm trying to spread the shots out a little bit. Yeah, practice arrows too, the blue, the blue bolts, losing tips there. I mean, as long as the shaft is straight, then you can just glue it back in. And I'm, I'm saving all this stuff. You know, so I'll just, I'll, I'll get like, a, I'll get like a, a little heat gun and I'll take these veins off and I'll pop out these, 
these knocks, I mean, these, these little end caps, and I'll keep all the tips because then I can repair stuff that way. You know, I could even take have a red practice arrow if I wanted to freak somebody out of a steamboat or something like that. But yeah, so keep in mind, the trigger pull is heavy with the 90-pound limbs. You're going to trash more of your bolts, even shooting in foam targets. At least that's my experience. So my recommendation would be only take the 90 pounds if you actually need the power, and otherwise stick with 55 and if you're just going to plink in your backyard, 35 is great. It's easier to draw. The trigger is the lightest, and your bolts will last for a very long time, I think. Well, that about wraps up this testing run. I hope you guys found this video interesting and informative. And if you have any comments or questions, ideas, anything like that, please put them in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, good shooting.